What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I have a story that's really going to make you feel some kind of way. I know it made me feel some kind of way for sure. You know, I don't want this to be something that's going to add fuel to the fire, but it more than likely will. And it is what it is because this story has to be heard. It is unbelievably sad, man. It broke my heart when I read it. But please leave me a comment in the comment section after I bring this story your way. And let me know exactly how you feel about it. All right, this story is coming from Texas. And I am not going to lie. I've been reading quite a bit of stories that are very similar to this one. And I've heard from many people that have came on my channel, done interviews, that them Texas officers ain't nothing. To mess with man they don't play now gotta be careful george gonzalez zuniga's shocking mugshot shows a person holding his head in place you don't see too many mugshots where the deputy's hands or sheriff whatever whoever's in the jail cop hands is in the photo on the guy's head why are their hands on this man's head in his mugshot you might ask the lawsuit filed by Zuniga's mother against four Hidalgo County Sheriff's deputies, hopefully I pronounced that appropriately, alleges brutal, unreasonable, and excessive force led to her son's death. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, this shit is so messed up, man. So messed up. On April 11th, the 22-year-old father of one was attending an Easter barbecue at a friend's residence at a trailer park where he stayed all night and fell asleep in the yard. That was one hell of an Easter bash in the trailer park. I ain't gonna lie, if he passed out in the front yard, <laughs> shit. So Gonzalez is in the front yard, just passed out sleeping, you know. Uh, in the early hours of the following morning, police were called to an altercation between two women in a different part of the park totally different park totally different people and situation that has nothing to do with gonzalez sleeping in the front yard seeing zuniga asleep near the scene officers woke him and after learning he didn't live there told him to go home the lawsuit claims he obeyed and started to leave but the officers then decided to arrest him anyway for violating the emergency management order and public intoxication to minor non-violent misdemeanors. They arrested him for this. Even though he was cooperating and leaving. Even though he had nothing to do with why they were called to the park. Do you see what's going on here? This dude had nothing to do with anything, anything, and somehow he's getting arrested. During the arrest, the documents claim Zuniga was tased multiple times, pushed to the ground, and his neck crushed and was placed in handcuffs and ankle restraints. It claimed he was intentionally tripped while shackled and tased again when he could not get up. Despite having to hold his head up for the mugshot and his obvious injuries, the family's lawyer says Zuniga was not offered medical treatment and was instead thrown in the drunk tank. After 21 hours in there alone, officers found him unresponsive. He was finally sent to the hospital. As well as being hypothermic, Okay, that means he was freezing to death. And having a dangerously low heart rate, he was found to have a severe cervical fracture and swollen spinal cord. Let me show you the mugshot again. They're holding this man's head because his neck snapped. Despite multiple surgeries, Zuniga was left paralyzed from the neck down he suffered multiple complications in the following weeks. On July 8th, he suffered a heart attack and died one week later. Mr. Zuniga's death was the direct consequences of the injuries and the lack of medical care by these defendants. The lawsuit claims, despite Mr. Zuniga posing no risk of harm to himself or others, they initiated an arrest and in the course of the arrest used tasers and physical violence sufficient to crush his neck, rendering him paralyzed. There was no need to use force, it adds. What do y'all think about that story? The officers have him shackled, ankles and wrist, and he trips. He probably didn't trip. His neck's freaking broken, man. He can't walk. And then they tased his ass again. 
probably because he wouldn't get up, probably because his neck snapped. That shit's sad, man. That is one sad story. So now, a mother's without a son. Uh, I believe he had a daughter. Is going to be without a father, all because officers want to mess with the guy that is sleeping in the front yard, minding his damn business, catching some Z's after a good party. And then it said because he was violating a management emergency management order. Maybe, I don't know what this means, but I think it has something to do with maybe curfews out there. Maybe someone could enlighten me and uh, look that up in Texas. Uh, you know, ever since the pandemic thing started happening, they started putting these little emergency orders where you can't go out at night or get together in large groups. This might fall in line with that. And if that's the case, that's just ridiculous because... He was sleeping in the damn grass, man. Not only do I want to see their family get paid with some cash for everything that's happened, but at the same time, I want to see those officers pay. I want to see those freaking officers pay big time. You know, there's a ton of stories like this, a ton that just go unnoticed, you know. Uh, there's cops in every single state. I don't give a shit if you ain't heard nothing. Nothing about it in your county, city, state, whatever the case is. Everywhere you go, there's going to be a police officer that's abusing his power. Anywhere, any branch, any field, if you got power, if people are, are in a position of power, you best believe someone's abusing it. That's just the facts of life. Get over it. And we can bark all day long about change this, change that, but for real, it will never ever change there will always be an abuse of power where there is power given now i got one more story coming your way and this just goes to show you that it's about that damn money baby that money three months after it was canceled at paramount network cops is back in production cops not live pd cops when's the new episodes gonna air you might ask well let me just break your heart really quick but it's not set to air anywhere in the United States. Oh. The long-running series has crews working in Spokane County, Washington, where it is filmed multiple times in the past. We have a long-standing relationship with cops and Langley Productions, and we are pleased they have decided to return, highlighting the outstanding work our deputies provide to all of you. The release notes that two crews from the show began filming in September will remain in the area through early November. The episodes being filmed won't air in the United States. A spokesperson for Langley Productions tells The Hollywood Reporter that the episodes are being filmed to fulfill commitments in international territories where cops still airs. Is this about transparency? No. No, it's not. Why would another country need to see the transparency of our policing? It's about the money. Not only are they making a ton of money off of us being put behind bars and slapping on fees that 90% of us can never pay back or get our license, but now they are making money off of us as entertainment. We are being arrested, filmed, and produced as entertainment towards a whole nother country. And they wonder why there's so much disconnect between the people and the police. I just thought I'd bring those two stories to y'all's attention. They really bother me. Please leave your comments in the comments section. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. This is where you get all your prison, jail, and street news, ladies and gentlemen. Go check out my other channel, Mr. Death. We are live on there every single day for about four hours straight, boy. I tell you what, grinding, grindage. And I got a lot of great interviews coming y'all's way, a lot of updates as well from some past guests and some new ones. So be on the lookout for that, all the people that enjoy the interviews. And, um, oh, and before I forget, please go support the channel and buy yourself some merchandise. Yeah. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, I salute every last one of you who been supporting me since the beginning. And everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound, y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.